Did you know that two people are side by side watching this video that at least one of them are deficient in magnesium? And you may say, well, that's not really a big deal. Don't be so sure. Don't be so sure. Don't be so sure. Who am I? <laughs> Remember Jack on Will and Grace? Don't be so sure. Anyway, so yeah, truth, hashtag truth. Um, and if you're over 40, as you probably are because you are watching this video, or if you're over 50, like me, and you're watching this video, you're definitely deficient in magnesium. And that includes, even if your diet is spot on. And why is that? Well, if your diet is spot on and you're eating all the stuff that has magnesium in it, greens, green leafy stuff, spinach, beans, um, almonds, doesn't matter guys. Our soil is so sucky and so deficient. I mean, drive through anywhere in the country when you see farmland, if it's not organic soil, it looks like, and if they're, if they've just finished harvesting mode and they're resetting the soil, what does it look like? It looks like they're planting stuff on the beach. It is pale white sand. There is rich black, rich, um, uh, what's what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? I can't I can't think of the word, but it, good soil is gone. It really is, unless you find organic soil, which is it's hard to find these days. So, all right, what is magnesium? Magnesium is a mineral, a very available mineral. It's not hard to locate. It's not hard to find, but it's involved in over 300. That is a ginormous amount of biochemical processes in the body. And to me, the most important one is energy production. Well, what does that mean? Well, it, it's exactly what it says. If you don't have energy, you're going to feel like shit, right? You're going to be laying around and not doing much. And again, I know I did a video on B vitamins, but more than likely, you know, again, let me just not go down that rabbit hole, but energy production and glucose metabolism. So now we're getting into the diabetes realm of, of issues and regulation of stress, because I'm sure you've heard people say you take magnesium and you fall asleep. Well, that's why it's so effective for stress and people take it at night because they fall asleep. So bone, um, bone metabolism, and I'm, I'm sorry, not bone metabolism, BMD, bone mineral density metabolism, cardiac regulation, and, and activation of vitamin D. So if you are taking vitamin D, but yet you're deficient in magnesium, you very well might not be absorbing this vitamin D because you need magnesium to support the absorption and the process and assimilation of vitamin D. So you see how all this stuff is connected together. And the beauty of this is it only takes, your body only needs a small amount of magnesium, but on a daily basis. That's why you have to replete daily with magnesium. And again, if the soil's not right and we're eating shit food and you're under a lot of high stress and you're really active, there's a lot of, remember, over 300 bodily processes, brain function, heart function, organ function, and muscle and nerve function. It, literally, moving your arm, let's, you're doing a bicep curl. You, you need magnesium to make that work. If you don't have magnesium, you're not going to have the energy to do that. So this is why, guys, this is so critical to to be optimized, not only are your diet, but your supplementation as well. There are so many things that you can do to be optimized without having to go to a physician and get on a shit ton, a uh, shit ton of meds. I mean, when I worked in the ER guys, I saw the same people come in with bags and bags and bags of medicines. And it's the same medicines for the same issues that the doctor tells them. If you try this, here's a prescription for that. And you can write prescriptions for supplements. You know, doctors can do that. But if they try these supplements, you could potentially alleviate the need for your polypharmacy that you come in with a grocery bag full of medications. So, okay, I got off on a tangent. I'm stepping off that soapbox. But again, you need to replete on a daily basis because our bodily functions burn through magnesium. And if your diet is not so great, you probably need to be supplementing. 
Again, if you're older, if you drink alcohol, if you have GI distress or IBS or anything similar to that, and if you're an athlete, you're moving a lot, so you're burning through magnesium. Why do you think all of these supplements, uh, I don't have it over there, I just took it downstairs, but I have a um, an energy, it's not an energy drink, but it's a workout drink that provides elemental, meaning the bioavailable form of magnesium, because my muscles need that when I'm working out and being active. So, excuse me, again, athletes, people that are under stress, all have increased need for magnesium. So what are the, the symptoms of magnesium deficiency? Well, it depends. And if you are deficient in magnesium, maybe you don't even know it until you, no, I don't want to say that's too late because it's not ever really necessary, necessarily too late. But what I mean by that is the timing and severity of the symptoms of magnesium deficiency depend on the, the degree of depletion. So, okay. So what I mean by that is let's say you have fatigue. And you've tried everything else. You've tried you've tried B vitamins. You've tried um, getting your adrenals tweaked, your hormones, and all that, and nothing else works. Well, it could be because your gut is not right, even though you're taking a magnesium supplement. Your gut is not right because it can't absorb the magnesium. So, do you see how important all of these things together? The previous video on probiotics: get your gut right so you can take the magnesium that that can be absorbed properly to address the muscle fatigue and weakness. But if you do have fatigue, let's say, or let's just say any symptom, your bloodstream, what's going to happen if you have any of these symptoms of, did I, did I even tell you the symptoms? I don't even know if I told you, but muscle weakness and fatigue, um, numbness and tingling. And again, you could have any you could have all of these. You could have one of these. Mood and personality changes. Really, really, really big one right now. There's a study that I'm, oh, this study right here that uh, indicates, and there's a ton of these guys. It's not just this one study, but there's a ton of studies that show how effective certain forms of magnesium are for anxiety, stress, especially depressing depression. And this is huge. This is really huge on the forefront of, of mental health guys, because it could potentially mean that if you're on any prescription med that you may, may operative word may be able to lessen that amount of medication or get off of it completely with the addition of magnesium. I'm not suggesting you do that, but what I am suggesting is that you consult your provider and see if that's a possibility for you, because if you can get off prescription meds and just supplement with a very easily accessible magnesium supplement, how great would that be? Your wallet's going to be lighter. Your burden on the healthcare system is going to be lighter. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing, but we need to be less dependent on big pharma. And this is a way that you can take control of your health. Be proactive in your health and ask questions and encourage your doctor to help you fix you. You know what I'm saying? We have to be proactive. So, so if you have low symptom or a low magnesium, you'll probably, potentially, not probably, going to not notice it initially because what's going to happen is your bloodstream borrows excess calcium from your cells and your bones. And that way, if you're running out of magnesium and it's borrowing, you're not going to see or feel or notice any symptoms that you're deficient in magnesium until there's nothing left in your bones and your cells to tap into, then you're going to have those deficiency symptoms. And by that time, guys, you're so far in the hole that you don't know if you're, you're going to feel like you can never dig out of this, but you can. You just have to be, like I said, diligent and, and encouraging your doctor to work for you, not against you. It's very, very critical that you take control of your own health. All right, so what happens when your you, the magnesium is pulling from the bones in your cells? Well, low magnesium can cause low calcium because these two things are interdependent. They're, they're connected to each other. 
And to, to further dive into that without going off on a, a, a super long tangent is magnesium, potassium, vitamin D, calcium, all these things have this very, very, very complex interconnectedness and dependentness. They need each other to stabilize and properly function the entire body. So that's what I was saying earlier. If your gut's jacked up and you're not taking a probiotic, you're not eating the foods and doing the things that you need to to ensure your gut is getting healthy, you take a vitamin D supplement, but you're not getting the benefits because your gut's jacked up. So then what happens? You become dependent in magnesium because all these other things are out of whack. And so you're dependent in magnesium, you're dependent in vitamin D, you're dependent in or dependent, uh, deficient is what I meant to say, depend, deficient in magnesium and, and, and gut health. And then it becomes this vicious cycle because magnesium is dependent on potassium, potassium and vitamin D and, and calcium. Again, all these things are interconnected. So if you're, if you're low in one, the potential is is pretty good that you're going to be are de deficient in all of these other things. And guys, deficient minerals, sodium, potassium, magnesium could potentially cause um, really bad stuff. I mean, bad stuff like seizures and, and heart rhythm disturbances and, and hypertension, which is the slow, silent killer the number one killer of black Americans. And they feel, I can't tell you how many clients, not clients. What are the people that come into the ER? They're patients. That's what I'm looking for. People in the back of an ambulance, black Americans, you know, you have to go through their history. What what meds are you on? Oh, what, what issues do you have? Oh, I have heart issues and I have blood pressure issues. I said, what do you, what meds do you take? Oh, I don't take anything but you just said you had a heart condition and you, you had high blood pressure. Well, yeah, I have the meds, but I don't take them. And then they drop dead. See, this is the problem guys. These are silent killers. You feel, you feel fine. So you feel like you don't need medication. You really have to be diligent. And again, I'm going to repeat myself. You have to be diligent and not only taking the medication that are prescribed and assigned to you by your physician, but ask what they're for. Ask, is there anything that you can do to help yourself get less dependent on prescription medication. And whether they tell you you can't or you can, hopefully they tell you that there is something they can do, but if they tell you that you can't, that's a load of horse crap. That is entirely not true. You may never become 100% free of them, but you can become less dependent. I know this to be fact. So what are the other things that low magnesium can cause? We already talked about... Um, heart disturbances because of those, that, those mineral imbalances, you know, but we're also talking about kidney stones and stroke and hypertension and COPD and high cholesterol and mental health issues. Guys, there are studies that show time and time again, how certain forms of magnesium can alleviate mental health issues and stress. And I mean, whereas other, um, other depression medications have, have not succeeded in helping these folks. So this is a really big deal. And if you have increased alcohol use, or if you have, um, if you're taking chemotherapy drugs, or if you're taking diuretics, which I know many of you are for high, high HCTZ, are you taking ACTZ? Are you taking Lasix for, for blood pressure issues? More than likely you're going to be deficient in, in magnesium because that further depletes your, you know, you have to pee out that excess fluid to get your blood pressure down. So when you're peeing out that excess fluid, what is attached to that fluid? Magnesium. So you're peeing all this stuff out. And like I said, if you're on certain antibiotics or chemo drugs or alcohol, you know, that further exacerbates the low magnesium status that you're in. And then people go to the run to the doctor and get a prescription because they feel like shit because they don't have any energy. Well, please, please heed my pseudo warnings here. I mean, you can help yourself feel better, but you just have to be diligent and love yourself enough and care about your health enough to go to your doctor and say, you know what? This is what I've learned. What do you think? And if they're unwilling to accommodate you and your new health journey, 
Well, tell them to go pound sand and find somebody that will help you. Because I've seen people get off their medication, a host of different, a variety of medications due to them taking control of their own health. So guys, this is, this is important stuff. All right. I could stay on that soapbox all day long. So let's talk about dose. What are we talking about? Again, dose is all over the place, but I'm going to super, super simplify this. If you're a gal, low 300 milligrams. If you're a guy, 400 ish milligrams, simple as that. 400, 420 in that area. Gals, 300, 320 in that area. And well, Cameron, what type of magnesium do I take? I'm glad that you asked. Do you know? I'm glad that you asked. I'm glad that you asked. Remember Jack, or did I already say that? Yeah, Jack on um, Will, uh, Will and Grace. I love him. He's so funny. All right. So at last count, gosh, I want to say there's nine. And in 2010, they just discovered the most recent form of magnesium, which is three and eight. T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E, three and eight. And again, depending on what issue you're addressing with this magnesium, that determines what form of magnesium you want to take. So let's just kind of give a broad overview. If you have stress, if you have depression, or if you have a low mood, or if you want to feel good in your in your head, those are the magnesiums that you want to consider that have a high bioavailability, like threonate, or glyconate, or bisglyconate, or taurate. So glyconate, G-L-Y-C-I-N-A-T-A, -A, glyconate. And the bisglyconate is B-I- G-L-Y-C-I-N-A-T-E, a bus glyconate. Those are the most bioavailable bio forms, meaning your body can process and assimilate, and it will go right to work in whatever area you need that in. Now, there are other forms, and if you ever had a colonoscopy, I can assure you that you did not have bis glyconate, <laughs> or mostly assure you, you probably had the form of magnesium called citrate. Again, if you've had a colonoscopy, you are very familiar with something called Go Lightly. And they send you home with a gallon-ish to drink within two days. And it is like a lemon chalk. Li lemon liquid chalk is what it is. And when you drink that, you better be close to the toilet within about an hour to two hours at the most. And you're going to have fire water, water coming out your ass. But when you do get all of that stuff removed from your insides, you, uh, you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding you at all. You are going to feel so light, physically lighter, but you're also going to have this freeness about your brain and your thought process. It's crazy how it works, but every single time, and I don't have any issues going to the bathroom, but... If you don't have access to go lightly, and I'm not suggesting that you go get cleaned out or any of that stuff, but let's say you go to Walmart or CVS or Walgreens or Publix or Fry's or any of those other big name grocery stores in the pharmacy section, you're going to find the, the commercial version, not the medical version, but the commercial version of mag citrate. It's in a little glass bottle. It's in the fiber section or the bowel section where Pepto-Bismol is. It's a little bottle and there's usually a lemon flavor and a grape flavor, and a cherry flavor. And you drink that, it's probably six to eight ounces. It's like drinking straight up lemon juice. Oh, it just gives you the lock jaw. But that's where the citrate, mag citrate, citrus comes in. It will make you not leave the toilet for hours at a time. And don't let that scare you. Again, it, to me, it's a good thing. It feels really good. I do that a couple times a year, and it's, oh, it's like the heavens open up and the light shines down. Anyway. So taurate, mag taurate is another form of magnesium that enhances brain and mood, but it goes a step further because it crosses that blood brain barrier and enters into the cell, um, uh, the, the, the cell and has neuroprotective properties. And what does that mean? Neuroprotective properties. So if you have Alzheimer's dementia or any other potentially neurodegenerative illness or disease, taurate can, I don't want to, not 
alleviate or get rid of these diseases, but they could potentially help you navigate these, these diseases better, especially if you have stress or uh, mood disturbances or depression. But also, again, it has neuroprotective properties. And mag torate, magnesium torate, that's just a combination of two, two minerals, uh, not two minerals. Um, taurine is, is um, it's an amino acid and the, the torate's amino acid, they combine it with the magnesium in the same capsule and you take that. So you have this kind of double whammy effect on your mood, really, really good stuff. And it enhances those feel good hormones in your brain. That's why this particular form of magnesium is so effective in elevating mood. So sulfate, the lesser forms that are, that work really well for laxatives, which I've just talked about citrate, but also mag, mag oxide and mag sulfate. If you take a mag standalone supplement, I don't think I have I do have some, but mine's bisglycinate. But a lot of magnesium supplements on the market, if you just go to a drugstore and you grab one off the shelf, it's probably going to be um, mag sulfate or mag oxide. And these are forms that are eas more easily accessible to manufacturers that make magnesium and they're also cheaper to make. So, and they're also found in multivitamins. So if you have a standalone supplement, it's very common to see these two forms, but it, they're also found in multivitamins. So just be, be mindful of that. They're also found in other tablet or capsule forms of laxatives. So be very mindful of that. So guys, I'm going to wrap it up now by just giving you a quick review of what we've talked about today as far as magnesium goes. It's a very, very essential nutrient and mineral that's found in over 300 critical processes like nerve and muscle function and heart heartbeat and blood pressure regulation and also metabolism and blood sugar regulation, which is something that a lot of folks these days are dealing with. And then unfortunately, they're dealing with it with prescription meds. So again, there's a number of forms of different magnesium. I just listed a bunch. Um, sulfate, oxide, chloride, um, malate, gluconate, citrate, bag, torate, uh, glyconate, bisglyconate. Again, if you're unsure which form you need, check with your provider. They can give you some guidance on that. And just to remind you, whatever form you take is probably going to be contingent upon what issue you're trying to address. Whether you have mood issues, whether you have stress issues, whether you have um, GI distress, whether you have blood pressure issues, whatever. It, you just can't go willy-nilly and buy a supplement, a magnesium supplement off the shelf, which you've done. I've done it. We've all done it. And we're like, why the hell isn't this working? It's like, well, if it were only that easy, right? It just, it, that's not the way supplementation works. It's just not that easy. So again, if you're not sure, reach out to your provider. They can give you some guidance on that. And if they can't, fire them and find somebody that can. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me. 